cool. Yeah. I like your, uh, like your, the, the awesome. platinum records. What they? What they? Yeah, I normally give all my records to my mum and dad, but because of lockdown, I've, a few new ones came. It's, it, that's for work, bitch, and that's for the four albums of their platinum. Hi, I'm Mike, and you're watching The Loft Sessions. Following on from our playlist from last week, I sat down with singer-songwriter Ruth Ann. We talked about the music industry, what she was like at school, and her new dog. Enjoy. How are you, Ruth Ann? You well? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for, yeah, taking the time to speak to us. How, uh, how have you been getting on during this lockdown? It's been good. I've been, because I've, I play piano, but I took up learning the guitar, so I've been learning the guitar, which is totally different than the piano. And then um, I've been just recording at home, like in my spare bedroom, just like with mics and I have a piano in the other room and just trying to get better at production, which has been a, what I've actually been mainly focusing on in lockdown. It's just given me loads of time to get better as a producer. And then just, yeah, writing, doing the odd Zoom session. And I got a puppy. So I've been also a dog mom for the first time. So yeah, there's lots going on. <laughs> that sounds like the best time. Tell us a bit more about this puppy. What, uh, what, what's their oh, name? Her name is Ruby. Ruby Rue, the Cavapoo. She's so, oh, she's just made, we got her two days literally before the UK went into lockdown. And we are just so thrilled because she's got no idea what's going on. She's just so happy. And it actually is really good because it's got us out walking. We never would have been really walkers before. But during lockdown, it actually, like, we've discovered parks that were, like, right beside our house that we never knew existed because we travel and we tour a lot. So it's nice to just kind of have that time at home. So, um, yeah, she's definitely a little princess, <laughs> our little diva. She's a little diva. Um, so we're here to talk about you today. So I want to take it back to sort of when you were at school. I want to know, what, what were you like at school? Oh, wow. I was obsessed with music, always. I was, I was the... I was a kid in the class that always was trying to get together like a choir or like everything. It's like, can we do a music thing? Can I, can we sing? Can I play? Like I would be writing lyrics in my French class. I have a French teacher took, I wrote these lyrics and I was probably like 16. It was like my last year in school and she took them from me because it was, they, she found them that I was writing them during lesson. I was like, that could be a hit, miss. You got that. <laughs> I went back to the school years later and she's like, I remember that day and I took them lyrics and like, she's like, I'm sorry. I don't know if they were like, like gonna be like the next one kit. And I was like, probably not because I was 16. But yeah, I was super just into music and I started writing when I was seven. So I just was always very creative child, very, um, you know, we didn't have phones and YouTube and everything back then, but I was very creative, always wanting to, you know, put together groups and music and songs and everything like that. Oh, always. So how did that translate into you for writing songs for other artists? I've got a list here. I've got Britney Spears, One Direction, and Nah Horan, and like JoJo, amongst many others. How do you? Yeah. How did you get your start in, in in writing for these huge artists? Yeah, I I basically started writing songs at home with a microphone. My dad and mum sing in church, so there was guitars, piano. Very musical family, always a sing song, you know, type of family. So I was always getting up at the family parties and singing. And I started at seven um, kind of changing the lyrics to songs for Father's Day and, and Mother's Day of like Backstreet Boy songs or like different songs I would change. They're like, you are the best dad type thing. That kind of started with seven. Then I started writing my own songs, literally just melody and lyrics like into a microphone. And I had this like two tape track and I would change the tapes over to record harmonies. And then I set up a girl group because I was like, I want to hear the harmonies. And then we started recording some music when I was like 13, 14. My dad met this like guy who was like gonna manage us and he got us some studio time. So I got used to kind of in being in the studio. And then my dad basically took one of them demos when I was 16 and um, and submitted it for this like national like songwriting competition um, where you won like 10,000 euro worth of equipment and you got in the paper and, and I he entered me with my girl band and I'd written and produced a song. So through that, I won that and through the press attention from that, I met a manager who managed the script at the time. And they weren't the script yet. They were in LA and they were writer producers. And he was like, he asked my parents, I was 17, I had just finished school. And he was like, I'd like to bring her over there and develop her as an artist. So um, after my family got to know him and the, and the boys in the script, so Mark and Danny, um, I was flown over to Los Angeles and I kind of started developing as an artist. But um, And on my third day there, 
um, I was introduced to Billy Steinberg and Josh Alexander and we wrote to Little Blake that day but that was for me but the whole time in my head I could hear Jojo and I didn't want to say anything and that's kind of where it all started me writing for the writers because I never felt like that song was mine and I said to my manager and I said that's for Jojo like it's definitely for Jojo and two years later after like the Pussycat Dolls tried it and different people tried it I heard that Jojo had recorded it and I was like this is what's meant to happen so as soon as that kind of became because that was such a big hit and that was my first hit as a songwriter all the publishing deal offers started flooding in and um, it just felt like an opportunity I couldn't like miss so I just took I started writing then for other people kind of full time as a songwriter and then once I kind of had more success as a songwriter and done all that and um, the artists I would work with would be like oh like you should be an artist so I started doing artist music at the same time and then started releasing that like two years ago so um, it felt like the right time to kind of like go into being an artist. When you're writing songs for other artists do you have like a specific artist in mind when you're writing a song? Or do you just kind of do a, a broader kind of um, idea and then when the uh, when the ideas come in, do you then tweak it for a certain artist? Yeah, I try to, it depends, like if I'm in with the artist, like I write a lot with Niall Horn, he's there. So it's a lot, it's quite easier when there's an artist that's really involved and in the room. When they're not in the room, I try to write the most universal thing, that, like the most universal thing that I can and just something that's really great because when it comes to writing for artists that aren't there, they want to have a song that they feel connected to and it also needs to stand out again, you know, amongst the rest. It's got to be like great. So I just try and always write the best song possible. If I think too much about what artist is for, it can get it can get you down a hole of trying to do what they've already done. And a lot of artists want to move forward. So like in the name of love, for instance, the Martin Garrix BB one, I never would have thought that that would have gone to a DJ because we wrote it on piano. And so it's actually more exciting to kind of see where the songs go when you've written them. And whenever I've tried to target an artist, it's more difficult. If they're in the room and you're working with them, then that's way easier. But when they're not there, it's hard to to do that so i try to just write the best song possible what artist uh living or or otherwise would you love to write a song with well jeff buckley i would have loved to write with i love him the grace album is one of my favorite albums of all time um, I love Chris Martin. I would love to write with Chris Martin because I just I've been to see Coldplay so many times and it's just tune after tune after tune. And I just I just and John Mayer is another one I would love to write with. That's that's still around today. Um, I would have loved to written with Amy Winehouse because I think she's she was phenomenal as well. So yeah, not setting your sights low, which is <laughs> no, good. No, I want the legends. Lauren Hill. Oh yeah, of course. Love Fantastic. Him. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give sort of aspiring singer-songwriters that maybe were uh, uh, in your position when you were 16, 17? I would say like do your 10,000 hours. If you want to be in production, do 10,000 hours in production. If you want to be a singer, do 10,000 hours singing. If you want to be a writer, do 10,000 hours of songwriting. Like it's the more that you are prepared and ready for this industry as so far as your craft, like being having a skill and having a craft and um, being able to hold your own in the room, being able to know where the weaknesses are needed in the song and the strength. I mean, that takes the 10,000 hours of you doing it. And so just writing as much as you can, keeping yourself inspired um, is so important. Sometimes I talk to new writers who are like, yeah, I'm doing three sessions a day and I'm in the studio so much and I'm like, it it's going to dry you up like it's very important that you stay inspired and you keep having the conversations that lead to the songs and going out and traveling and seeing the world like that is a big part of it because when you're writing something you're trying to make it universally relatable and if you're not living it's very difficult to write something that's universally relatable so i would say to like make sure that you also live a little and just remember that the music speaks for itself so let your talent do the talking first and your music do the speaking would you say you've got to work bitch <laughs> exactly and that's the thing get ready to work it's not you know if you're in it for fame or you know to just get rich quickly or anything like that you're in the wrong job because this is a lifelong investment and you know you have times everyone who writes hits you have times where you're writing loads of hits and you have times where you're not writing any and you so you've got to really be in it for the love of music and the passion for music and the craft here in the uk 
uh, lockdown is starting to to loosen. Uh, the news came in yesterday, Fourth of July, some things going to be opening, pubs, restaurants, and stuff. Um, what are you What are you missing most from the pre-lockdown world? Gigs, gigs, yeah. And gigs. Yeah, that live gig. I had a whole summer of festivals booked and to play. Not even just playing gigs, being a being at gigs like that. You know, now thinking of being that close to people, it's almost like wow, like we were so free. You know, that real feeling, feeling of freedom. And um, I always look around at the crowd. And I love being a, like with crowds that are just responding to music. So I've really missed that. So that's going to be really amazing when we're able to gig again and go to gigs. So I feel like if we ease ourselves into it, um, it's going to be the best. But yeah, I like. It, it does feel weird, even when you see, when you're allowed to see friends outside, it's very strange not to hug people or that kind of like awkwardness when people want to pet the dog and they're like, can I pet your dog? Like it's very awkward time. And, uh, but I think that we've done, an, we've done amazing as a society to kind of like, we're beating it. So I feel like if we just keep being clever and smart and you know, not going too fast and just easing ourselves into it, I think it'll be fine. Cause we do still have to be like careful, I guess. Absolutely. Uh, Ruthann, where can people find you, follow you online? Yeah, at this is Ruthann is my Instagram. You can come follow me. You'll hit, see all the news and everything. Uh, Ruthann is my Facebook. And I think at this is Ruthann is my Twitter as well. And I'm on YouTube and I'm on Spotify, Ruthann. And you can go and there's new music coming from me soon as well. So I've been finishing it while in lockdown. So I'm excited for everyone to hear like the new music as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us. And um, we'll see you next so time. Much. Thanks, Emil. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>